Recently, Marantz introduced the Model 50 series amplifier and digital player. Special since the amp is purely analog while the digital player combines CD playing, streaming and DAC functionality. The amp is simply called the Model 50 and the digital player the CD50 networked CD player. This video will cover the amplifier. The review of the network CD player will follow shortly. Having an amp without digital electronics always appears to me. It lets you choose the digital player separately, depending on your needs and desires. You could for instance select the SACD30 instead of the CD50N that plays back Super Audio CD next to CD and streaming and has identical styling. The housing is only slightly deeper. But then again, having a network player function built in makes life easier of course. Just one unit, less wiring and one remote control. For those who prefer that, Moran says the Model 40N which I reviewed in March 2023. It also delivers 2 times 70 watts and even looks about identical but has the HEO streaming plus DAC integrated. Like the Model 40N, the Model 50 is available in silver and in black. It measures 442 by 382 by 130 mm and weighs 14.4 kg. With the exception of the power button and the headphones jack, all controls are on the panel that appears to float in front of the actual front panel. Here we find the input selector, the speaker group selector, two groups of two loudspeakers can be selected independently or together, bass control, the display showing the chosen input and volume level, the treble control, the balance control and the volume control. Volume and input can be set from the comprehensive infrared remote control too. Tone control can be bypassed from the remote control by selecting Source Direct. The remote can also control the CD50N digital player and by connecting the remote signals it all works like the Model 40N as one unit. And that includes power and even HDMI ARC in combination with the CD50N as well. On the rear we see a phono input on high quality RCAs suited for moving magnet cartridges. Next to it the ground terminal. On the lower row we see the CD input on high quality RCAs with to the right of it using standard quality RCAs, line inputs labeled tuner, line in, line to and recorder. Next to that the recorder output, something you don't find often on amplifiers nowadays. Then the pre-amplifier output to connect a power amplifier to, a subwoofer output that works with loudspeaker group A when engaged and the power amplifier input. Then loudspeaker terminals for the group A loudspeakers with below it the loudspeaker terminals for group B. The remote control bus couples functions with for instance the CD50N to have the combination function as it were just one unit. Finally the IEC mains input. When the lid is removed we see a component layout we have seen before with Moran's amplifiers. Left the power supply, in the middle the power amp with cooling profile so the latter forms a nice shield to separate electromagnetic stray fields in the power supply from the audio electronics on the right. Other shielding in the shape of a metal panel can be found directly behind the front panel. Let's go into detail and look behind the mains inlet where we find a small switch mode power supply that powers the control electronics and makes a low power consumption standby function possible. All audio is powered through a linear power supply that starts with this 66 amps toroidal transformer mounted on a 1.2 mm steel plate to reduce vibrations. From there the power goes to the circuit board that also contains the power amplifier. Here it is rectified and buffered in bespoke Moran's electrolytic capacitors made by Suscom. This way power loss is minimal 
and power delivery fast. Mounted against the cooling profile you see the power transistors. Per channel there are four, two parallel pairs in push-pull named High Instantaneous Current Capability, HICC for short and delivering 70 watts per channel in 8 ohms and 100 watts in 4 ohms. The power feed to these transistors over the circuit board is partly over thick and wide tracks and partly over four copper bars. On the lower board we find a line level electronics, completely discrete, so no use of op amps. Here also bespoke electrolytic capacitors by Suscon, copper foil polypropylene film capacitors, precision resistors and other quality components. Marantz uses its hyperdynamic amplifier module, HDAM for short. Here the HDM SA3 version is used and it is a clever system. To explain it let's first see how a normal amplifier sets volume. A digital source has about 120 dB of dynamic range and standard 2 volts output. If that 2 volts would have sent at the same level to the power amp, the sound would be very loud. So between the input selector and often a buffer amp that has zero gain and the power amp a variable resistor is inserted, the so called potentiometer or pot meter, that functions as a volume control. That attenuates the level so that the power amp outputs less power. Let's say that the pot meter attenuates 10 dB. This not only reduces the sound level, it also brings it closer to the noise floor so that in this example the signal to noise is reduced with 10 dB too. And if the level is further reduced, the signal to noise is equally reduced. But what if you replace the pot meter with a variable gain amplifier and change the gain structure? This way the full dynamic range remains intact. The system by Marantz is somewhere in between these. The upper board contains the phono board that uses DC servo to avoid the use of coupling capacitors and the same quality components are used. Using the amp is rather straightforward. Hook up a source, select a matching input, switch on the amp, set the volume and bobs your uncle. Choose source direct to get the highest sound quality. Only when a track really needs it use the tone control. Not that the tone control is bad, but every tone control, including digital ones, reduce resolution and phase behavior. When you use the Model 50 in combination with the matching CD50N digital player connected to the power amp input and with the remote control buses connected, the volume is controlled on the CD50N. If then an HDMI R connection is made between the digital player and your TV, switching on the TV with the TV remote will also switch on the amp and the digital player, while the volume can be controlled from the TV remote. I will discuss this somewhat more in the CD50N video that is due soon. I started in my setup too where the Model 50 took the place of my trusty Marantz PMKI Pearl Light to drive the Acoustic Energy Radiance 1 loudspeakers on target stands and with stack audio over 50 dampers using Kimber 4PR loudspeaker cable. The Radiance 1's are supported by the RELT5 subwoofer, this time connected to the loudspeaker terminals of the Model 50. Especially with the RELT subwoofers I like this better than using the subwoofer output. The Eversolo DMP H6 was used as a source and was connected to the CD inputs on the Marantz using Siltec London RCA cables. The network connection was made using a CAT6 patch cable to the Optron Ether region powered by the Optron Ultra Caps 1.2. The dirty side of the Ether region was connected to the central switch on the third floor of a CAT6 patch cable and from there to the internet modem downstairs. The Intel NUC 10i7 FNH running Rune Rock as server provided the music. An Apple iPad Pro was used to control Rune. The equipment was placed in a target rack. I used the Marantz MPK up per light in this setup for years now. It was a standard Marantz amp, the PM 
8006 if I remember well, that was tweaked by the legendary Ken Ishiwata. The Model 50 can be seen as a successor of the PM8006 but it sounds even better than my tweaked Kia Pur Light. Not surprising given the components used. There is a very spacious stereo image with excellent focus and air around the instruments and voices. Microdynamics, pace and rhythm and tonal balance are all excellent for this class. It shows what happens in amplifier development over the years. When reviewing the Marantz Model 40N, which is essentially a Model 50 with integrated HEO streaming, I took it to my setup 1. Totally out of proportion of course, but very interesting for judging the limits in sound quality. So I took the Model 50 downstairs and hooked it up. With the Core Dave DAC and the Grim U1 player connected over Network Acoustic Muon AES EBU cable, it got the best source I have heard up till now and it never hurts to have the best source. They receive mains input over the transparent power isolator 8. The connection between the Grim and the Zistel GS1910HP switch was over Network Acoustics Muon streaming system. The loudspeakers are the PMC FAC12 signature on stack audio over 70 isolators and connected over AudioQuest Robinhood Zero loudspeaker cable. The PMCs are not hard to drive but have a relatively low sensitivity so 4 to 5 dB more power is needed than average. Here it appears that the mid range is even cleaner than I heard upstairs. Of course the PMCs are known for their fantastic hand built mid range drivers, but if the resolution is not offered to them they can't reproduce it. It gave fantastic voices and brass. My glockenspiel test was very convincing too. That might be primarily down to the Grim player, but again here if the amp doesn't cope with the fierce highs it would still sound nasty. Of course the air amp delivers clearly more but it costs 9 times the price of the Model 50 so it better. If you are planning on buying a stereo choose a more balanced selection of equipment. But that wasn't the point here. I wanted to see how much sound quality the Model 15 bottom line would deliver. And it very much convinced me. In most cases I personally prefer separation between the amp and the digital player. Because I am more sensitive to artifacts in digital sources than in class A or AB amplifiers. You might choose different and then the Model 50 sibling, the Model 40N might be a better choice. Or the Arcam SA30 that I also reviewed and is to be replaced by the A25 soon. But if you are like me you should seriously consider the Model 50 for it's a work of art, not only on the outside but also sound wise. Which is great for the 1800 Euro price tag. And on that bombshell we come to the end of this video. See you next week Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media. So you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I am Hans Weekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you next Friday or on Patreon. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.